Well, now I'd like to go to uh, Steve Sherrill for what do you want to talk about? And I think I know what he wants to talk about. So welcome, Steve. Is Steve not here either? No, Steve, who? He's here. Oh, okay. I just wondered. I didn't hear anything. <laughs> I'm here. You, you, you called me, right, Jim? Yes, I did. Is your name okay. Steve? Well, it, it was. Sometimes it's not. I understand. I've called, I've called other things. Huh. It, it, it's all up to you, sir. Well, I was kind of walking around trying to hump, hump us some notes. You know, I'm, I'm really lucky to be able to have a segment on new tracks, um, it, it's it makes me do a little work every week. I even do a little work on the layout, and uh, I do a little research sometimes, and I even take some notes. And with those notes, I always put a date to, of the presentation so that I can maybe refer to it at some other time. Um, new tracks has really given me the opportunity to share a hobby that I've been in for many, many years. Um, I, I really enjoy model railroading. Um, as I demonstrated last week, I do experiment around a little bit um, when I showed my little micro layout, which I think is uh, a, a, a popular, beginning for many people we've always recommended start small and don't try to build that in prior to first build um, now i'm kind of faced with as you get later in life what to do with a big layout um, and i don't know what to do with it i've had the layout that i have for 25 years now and it's progressed as far as it's going to go and uh, at some point, I think it may be time to take that layout down and put something else up. I assume that other people have faced this same situation. And it'd be interesting to see how they dealt with it. So if, if anyone on here has had a layout for a long time and then dismantled and, and, and taken it down, I think uh, I would love to hear how you handle that decision. So anybody who is in that situation now or has been, if you could give me a little um, help on trying to make that decision. It's, it's a tough decision to make to, to say goodbye to an old friend that you spent 25 years constructing. Um, has anyone faced the same um, the shit that I'm trying to face right now. I mean, I, I assume some of you have. Yep, I have. I just, uh, but last year I uh, tore down a layout I've been working on for, oh yeah, about 25 years. And uh, I'm a builder. I like building things. And mm -hmm. uh, I'd run out of things to build. I'm 79 years old. As of, yeah, to, let's see, next month, 10th of next month. But anyway. You, you um, had a layout, Earl? Earl, you have a layout? Oh, yeah. It was, uh, it, it occupied one room, was about uh, 16 by 36 foot, double, double layer, uh, you know, two stacks. And then in another room, there was a uh, eight foot diameter helix and a staging area. Mm -hmm. So well, I thing, have... The whole thing I have my out. layout in a separate building completely um, in back of the house. And um, one of the things that I found out is it's <laughs> it's a little tough to go out there sometimes when it's pouring down rain, you know? They're, they're, everybody won't, always wants to have a separate building. That's all I want to have a separate building for my trains. I found that it's not all what it's made out to be. But that's that's not 
what is going to you know make my decision. Um, I'm just faced with a new challenge, you know. With the layout, the little micro layout I showed last week, I think is is very appealing to me. It's completely new. Um, it's smaller, doesn't take up much room, and at, at 82 years old, I think that it's it's time to start winding things down. Um, so I'm faced with, you know, what do I do with the stuff that I've built? Um, you know, it's, uh, I'm not getting out of the hobby by any stretch of imagination. I, I just need to downsize and maybe go in a little bit of, of a different direction. I could still use all the buildings because yeah, I'll still uh, be in. Yeah, I basically changed, I changed direction completely. Um. I, I being a builder, I like to build models of prototypes, and uh, I decided to do what I'm, I, I, when I started this layout. I was considering doing. I live in Wilmington, Delaware, and the Wilmington waterfront was a heavily industrialized area with really complex trackage, served by the Pensy, Reading, and the B and O. All three of them came in there. Um, I got to the point where I finished the model of the. Uh, the uh, Pensy Station in Delaware, Wilmington, Delaware, Pennsylvania Station. And I finally decided that, you know, this doesn't, I, I've always been a fan of the CNO. And so I said, okay, I'm going to switch over to the CNO. I said, but, but, well, anyway, it was, it was never really totally satisfactory. Um, so I finally got said, look, I'm going to do, I'm going to pick a spot. I, I've never, been a fan of modeling a railroad that went from, say, Chicago to Los Angeles in your basement. You can't do that. And here I was trying to model just the uh, the section from uh, Ronsford to A Cabin, which was just a grade, you know, the, the eastbound uh, eastbound grade. And I couldn't even do that. It was, it was just not enough room. So I finally decided I'm going to just build a model of Thurman. Thurman West Virginia, and I'm going to build it exactly the way the railroad had it. I don't have to do any track planning. I just take the railroad's track plan and plunk it into the corner of my basement, and away I go. And I have just enough room to fit the whole town on one wall of the basement. And uh, I'm having a ball doing it. Oh, was your old layout a shelf type layout, or it was dumb, you... uh, two shelves? It was it was uh, oh, it was huge. It was uh um, I guess I had about almost a thousand feet of mainline track. And wow. uh, it took, uh, you know, one loop around the, it was set up to either run point to point or continuous for operation purposes. And uh, it'd take about well, 20 minutes for one one pass around the track. Mm -hmm. You're going from one room to the other and everything. And it, it was not uh, one of the things I wanted it to be a walk around so I could follow the train everywhere, but going through the walls into the other room took that out of the picture. Hmm. But um, yeah. no, I've uh, I'm, I'm quite satisfied going uh, you know, Terry. It wasn't it wasn't it was a dec hard decision to make, but um, I decided it was it's just not going the way I wanted to do it. I was, I was running out of things to build. Yeah, and so I'm. Well, um, like I, I even build my own switch machines, <laughs> you know. This is, and they're, they're fairly complicated too with electronics and everything. And but um, so I'm 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 quite content going after stuff. I'm, I'm, it's sort of crazy to start a, another layout like this at my age. But uh, what the heck? Why not? <laughs> <laughs> well, this is the first layout that I've taken down. Uh, or I'm considering taking down. Um, and it seems like, you know, after you get the first two or three feet, it's easy after that. It's just, yes. it, it's just once you get started, that decision is final and you're ready to move on and, and build something else. And so I, I think that's where I'm, I'm going to be. Um, and I don't even really have to do anything but take the track up and put you know, in scale track down and have O and eighteen, and have a huge layout. But I'm looking to make it smaller, just because one person can only run so much. That's right. Um, 
you, you know, I we. I'll tell you what what you want to do if you if you're, if you're going to change if you're going to change gauge you, you, if that's one thing. But I I stuck with the HO. All my track is hand laid. Well, mm -hmm. not all of it, but 90 percent of it is hand laid. And I just salvaged all the switches. And in the last two days, I built a uh, seven track switch ladder in two days with all hand laid switches because hey, was, you enjoy hand laying track. Oh make... yeah, I, I, all my tracks hand laid. Yeah. The only so, the only track that's not hand laid is in tunnels and staging area where you can't see it. Yeah, well that I I never enjoyed that. Um, well, I never got out of it when other people get out of it. You know, some people find it relaxing. I, I actually found it more pressure um, to get everything perfect. So and, and and it took me longer. And I know there's some people say hey, I can lay three feet of track as quick as you can put a three foot ready to run section down but i don't believe that so <clears throat> so i won't i won't be handling or anything like that it's just that um i i i, I don't want to get under the layout anymore um you know i can't i've made the layout so i can't get to my work area without crawling under it and so that's you know a a problem for me and um, these are all things I think you face as, as you get older. I certainly wouldn't recommend anybody who's 50 years old <laughs> or, or, you know, 60 building a layout that you have to crawl under and do wiring and looking up and things like that. I think you'll be you know, a little that's, bit that's disappointed. That's one of the reasons I tore it out because I had to. <laughs> Everything's yeah, going to be on the front, just behind the fascia now. <laughs> that, that we've faced um or we're, we're going through it now um also uh, we may you know we just may want to change like you're, you're going for cno uh, from from what you were before and you're picking an actual setting or a, a location um you know I, I like to freelance a lot i think freelancing is in in, in the scale and gauge that i'm doing it is with the way to go. I mean, you know, um, create what you want, the way you want it to look, and it's your railroad. Um, I strongly recommend that. But there are a lot of people who uh, will go prototype, and that's fine. Um, you know, anybody else who's, who's come up with this type of decision to be made? Um, I know that everybody doesn't have a layout that's, that's up right now. But my teardown decision was made for me because I moved. Yeah, well, my, my my build was made 23 years, 20 some years ago when we moved here. Um, I went from, from a small third bedroom type setting into a uh, 24 by 32 building. So, you know, and I went to Grandio, so let's build, make it so five people can run and you know, three people can stand around and all this kind of stuff, and um, and that's what it, that's what I did. But uh, now times have changed, so you know. I mean, we, we all get there. Um, Fred Costco, you have a layout, don't you, Fred? Yes, I do, and. Uh, you, it was moved from the previous house uh, to where I'm at now. And basically, it was enlarged. I had more room, so I enlarged the layout. And I also have a uh, operating uh, two-rail live overhead uh, trolley line that I acquired from one of our deceased trolley members. And that was disassembled and moved. So... Uh, you're old scale, am I, am I correct? Uh, yeah, yeah, two rail old scale. Okay, all right. Wow. So you... but they're two separate layouts. The trolley is separate from the steam road. Oh, okay. Now, do you find that a problem as far as selection of when you want to operate one, or you just... No, not really. Uh, uh, the trolley... 
uh, system basically was for the trolley boys to come over and operate on. And then the two rail was for the uh, other guys that I'm involved with to run on. Yeah. And uh, the two rail uh, steam line is real simple. It's basically a single track with passing siding. And there's an interchange with a, another railroad. And when it gets to the end, there's a turntable to turn the engine to come back. So uh, it's basically a one-man operation. Now, do you have plenty of friends that will come over and operate with you? Do, I mean, do you have like two or three people? or? Ten yeah, or um, uh, usually get about a half dozen show up. And, uh, you know, just take turns. Yeah. It yeah. uh, yeah. works out good. And the rest are socializing. So works well, out real good. Yeah. I think, Doug Sassman, let me ask you. Uh, you have a layout also, am I correct, Doug? Doug. <laughs> Doug Sassman? Yes, you have a layout. Am I correct, sir? Yes, I do. S gauge. And, mm. Oh, S gauge. Okay. Now, uh, have you? Um, get, how long have you had the layout that you have up now? Have you ever had to make a decision to take it down? Well, I think this is about my fourth layout I've had since I started uh, building layouts maybe five starting when i was about 12 years old but anyhow yeah this is about probably about my fifth layout so your current layout is what size how, how large is it 13 by 16 and it's double decker oh good wow well, hand laid code 125 and and um how long have you had this layout well, I've, let's see, but still trying to get it together. The bottom half is about, oh, eight, nine years, I'd say. But I got moved back down. I moved down here. We moved down to the Spokane area. Is that when you retired or? Yeah, after I retired. For, <laughs> I stayed for a while. And yeah, yeah down where the kids were so i think you know um quite a few people have had to make it have to make a decision to take a layout down whether it's whether it's changing a scale or gauge or um retirement or downsizing i mean there are various times when we have to make these decisions some of them are are difficult and sometimes things like a layout may also uh, influence some of those decisions that I just mentioned, moving and things like this. Oh, I don't want to move. I've got this train layout, and, you know, uh, that kind of thing. But, um, you know, I just, my own personal um, situation is I think I've just reached the end with this railroad. Um, I still go out there and run it often. Um, I don't get as many people coming over anymore because a lot of them have passed away. Um, and so, you know, being involved with new tracks has certainly opened up a, a, another way to uh, communicate and uh, just be a, a part of a, a group of guys who, who are model railroaders. Um, we know we don't all model the same. We don't all model the same scale uh, or gauge, but we have a common interest that we just like to uh, trains. Um, I just think that when these decisions have to be made, they're just not easy. Um, anybody else got in any situations that they've had to deal with with this kind of uh, decision? I've had several, Steve. It's Pat here. Okay, Pat. Um, the first one I had was an HO layout in a home that we had. 
uh, for several years. Uh, unfortunately, it burned down, so I had to re re rethink my layout. So we built a new home in the same place. And at that point, I started to decide whether I wanted to go into another scale. So I went into G scale, garden railroading. Mm. That was a whole different ball of wax. And very interesting, I found that there were very few people who sold the G scale. So I decided to go into a hobby shop business. Mm. I went into the hobby shop business and started selling G scale and all the detail parts that went with it. From that point, I had stayed with that for quite a few years, and then we decided to move. So when I moved, I moved to a smaller place where I'm at now. I sold all my G scale and went into old scale. So now I'm in old scale, and we have a 1,700 square foot home. In the basement, I have one room. It's uh, 23 feet by 12, 12, 14 feet wide, somewhere in that area. And mm -hmm. I built a layout that was high enough that I could sit on an easy chair and push it around underneath the layout so I wouldn't have to crawl around, which was the best thing I ever did because I can sit in a nice office chair and look up and do whatever I had to do. But yeah, it, it, it's it been a challenge for me. Now I have so darn much stuff in all scale, I don't know what I'm going to do with it all. I'm pushing 80 right now. <laughs> so, you know, that kind of makes you think twice. <laughs> If your wife gets left with all this stuff, where where's it all going to go? Yeah, stuff like that. I, I've had a lot of interesting times in my past, and uh, you know, I even got to the point where I manufactured stuff. I was manufacturing uh, aluminum rail for G scale at the time. Well, let, let me ask you this, Pat. Mm -hmm. I, I know that you're working toward mass model railroader. Mm -hmm. Is, is this a goal that you've had for a long time? Or yes, it has been. And uh, I never really got into push, pushing it hard enough because I was so busy with, with my life and with everything that I was doing. But then when I got back into the old scale, I started thinking about what all the work I was doing and how I could uh, you know, make it pay for myself and all the work that I am doing and make it work for me. And I found that uh, the... Uh, you know, it was the way to go. And that's what I've done. And I've been involved. I've been really involved, especially with new tracks here. I've, I've learned a lot. And uh, I've had some discouraging moments at times, but uh, it's it's been a lot of fun. And it's made me uh, more aware of what I'm doing. Anyway. Well, I, I think, you know, from what I've seen in the pictures of your layout, you have an excellent layout. Thank you're, you. You're, you're a quality modeler. And, I enjoy uh, I it a lot. To... I enjoy showing it to people if they do come over to look at it. But, uh, you know, <laughs> you don't see a lot of people. Well, you, now that you're working for Master Model Railroader, um, do you find the quality of your work? Has... I find it changes your uh, what you do. You try to do more detail and watch what you're doing and all the little things that, you know, people will see. If you don't see it, they will see it. So you kind of watch what you're doing and make it better. Well, what are some of the tricks that you do to make it better? Well, I, mean, detail. I, I, always, I always use something like, number one, I use a mirror. I, I looked at everything through a mirror yeah, after I good. built it. And number two, I had a kid come over and say, hey, what do you think? Because they'll tell you the truth. You know, but yeah, um, I, I you're... think your your friends will tell you in a hurry, especially if they're model railroaders that have obtained the uh, master model railroad. I have a number of people here that are master model railroaders and are friends of mine uh, mm -hmm. in the local area. So they'll tell you what to do and what to look for and what to watch out for. Mm -hmm. uh, if you don't do that, you're not uh, you're not interested in getting those uh, awards, you know, or becoming a well, master model. Is your is your layout um, a monster size? Or no, it... no, it's not a monster. That's for sure. It's a single main line running around, and it's in a dog bone fashion, a bent dog bone. <clears throat> if I have time, sometime I'll show you the uh, track plan, but. Uh, yeah, it's it's not a complicated one. It has a engine yard, you know, 
there's a number of things that I could show you pictures later on, but uh, I think that's where it really counts. If you can show pictures of what you've been doing and what you have done, people will understand it more. You know, understand it, be understand it better. You know, I, I don't know if I can show you anything here or not. Uh, let's see. Well, in your particular situation, were you restricted to the size of a, of a bedroom or? No, um, I got a room in the basement. It's about half the size of the basement. Okay, so you had a and pretty good size. The basement is here. finished totally. Yeah, I don't know if this one will show up or not, but we'll see. Oh, share screen. So you're you're working on that engine house now, right? Yeah, it's a big job. Huh. And will that is that the last thing you need to qualify? It's the last thing I've got to do to uh can you see this at all? Not yet, no. All right. No. Anyway. Anyway, okay. We'll see. You'll show us one day. Yeah, I will. So that's the last thing you need, though. To Steve, I have a question for Pat. Yeah, go ahead. I'll get time. out here. Right? Sure, Doug, Thanks, go ahead. Steve. Uh, Pat, you say yes. you got made your layout as high enough so you can go underneath with the easy chair. Do you have to use a step ladder to see the top when you're running it? No, I could use it, but I don't. It's about 50... I say about fifty-two or fifty-three inches high. Just That's enough room to get you duck a little bit to get under, but you're in a chair. I hate crawling around because if I get down there, I'll never get back up again. Yeah, <laughs> I'm still crawling around all mine. It's hard. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know that, that's one of the reasons why I went battery power was not to have any wiring. So that's been successful. <laughs> I mean, and that, now, that works. And, and now that I'm considering going to a smaller 18-inch um, gauge in O scale, mm -hmm. I'm going to have to wire it up, but I, I can't remember how to wire these things up. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's it's like you you, you want to go forward and experiment, but then you, you got to go take a couple steps back. And uh, Can you see that now, Steve? Yes. Yes, I can. All right. Let's go into a few others. That's my sawmill complex. Now, your track is not hand laid or is it hand laid? Yes, it is. It's 90% hand laid. Okay. That's a little oh. uh, gang gang house there. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> There's my uh, <clears throat> engine yard. There's the sawmill unloading deck there's a signal tower now was that there's was that a kid or, pardon me the switch tower there was that a kit it was a kit but i kit bashed it there was no okay. siding like this on it and there was no uh this year i put brick on instead of the stuff they had <clears throat> they had some kind of lap siding on there too is the that, interior, I, I completely finished it with uh, control panels. Oh, the whole works. I like doing interior and lights yeah. to everything. Huh. There's the mountain scenery in the background. Now that's up right at the ceiling. Uh, that's within about a foot and a half from the ceiling. Okay, very nice. And, thank you. <clears throat> Don't forget the dinosaur. Oh, <laughs> shush. <laughs> the dinosaur is up here. I don't know if you can see him in here or not, but he's up there. I do that for the kids. <laughs> Gary, yeah. I, I knew you'd say something. <clears throat> There's my planer shed. All this has been scratch built. Well, what there, do you there's have? another view of the sawmill. You don't you don't have enough structures to qualify for. Well, I I got to sit down and do the stupid paperwork. <laughs> I hate paperwork with a passion. There's my coaling tower. That's very nice. Nice weathering on that. 
Thank you. There is my scratch built uh, trestle, one of them. I did both a curved and a straight one. There's a scratch built uh, dynamite house. Did There's you carve that built... stone? I'm sorry. Did you carve that stone, Phil? That's all plaster. That was a stone plaster, like it was already cast. I have a, I have castings for stone, <clears throat> brick like that. Yeah. So I finished it all and put it together and put some signage on it and painted it and added a. That's all a lot, uh, photo paper that looks like uh, corrugated steel. Yes, that's all that is. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm losing my voice. <clears throat> There's my little uh, burrow crane car. This is one of those uh, caterpillars. I, I loved it. So I I put new headlights on the front of it because they were missing. And I, I had to put a stack on that I made myself. And I had to put a breather cap on myself. These here are rubber tracks that I actually turn. So I use that for the logging part. There's the coaling tower again. I scratch built these uh, chutes because I didn't like what they had. So I, I redid it and I put pulleys on top here and these will go up and down. And these are actual uh, weights, fishing weights. Mm. That's pretty nice. Thank you. There's this another shot, a night shot of the uh, planing shed. Yeah, my building's the guys that don't work at night. Yeah, well, anyway, <laughs> <laughs> there's the lumber yard at night. Everything's light. I love lights. I go nuts with light. You can ask Gary. <laughs> <laughs> if he ever needs any lighting, he comes to see me. Hmm. Now, here's the here's the pits for the engine house. That sits on top of the pits. The pits are there and ready to go. I've got the engine house three quarters done now. And I'll show you some pictures of that later. There's another shot of the planer house. Another one. But those stacks of wood, are those individual pieces? Yes. Okay. I, know some, I have some... a source of lumber that I don't have to worry about. Oh, you, you must because uh, you, you can use, use a lot of board feed. No, I, what I, there's, a, lumber. there's a trick to doing this. What you do is you make the long sticks for for the first two layers and then make short ones for each end in, in the middle and then do the outside yeah, yeah, with yeah, the long yeah. ones. Yeah. And make a hollow center. Yeah. Saves you a lot of lumber if you, if you, if you know, don't have a lot. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm almost looking for some guy, somebody in 3d printing to make some of those stacks. I think yeah, that Vanta, works too. Yeah. Vanta or somebody made um, some lumber, lumber stacks. stacks? Yeah, I like uh, making the real thing so I can weather it. Yeah. Here's my control system. That's wow. easy DCC. It's got a transformer here that runs my track. Or not my track, but my uh, switch machines. They're all those slow motion switch machines. This is DCC by easy DCC. It's uh, all uh, radio controlled. That's what the main panel looks like. Mm -hmm. I can run a, a, as much as four trains with this thing without a problem, but uh, I do two and that's hard enough. <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll skip by this one. <laughs> There's oh, my curved trestle I scratch built, totally. Wow. But all that track work is all handily and weathered. I made my own ties too. There's a lot of ties. There's another picture. And that's about no it. No dinosaur though. No, I'm not going to show you that. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe <laughs> next time we'll show it to you. Wow. Anyway, I thought that would be interesting for, for some people that haven't seen it. Jeff Thornton, could you turn your sound on so we can? I want to talk to you for a minute? Jeff, how you doing? Yeah. yeah, how you doing, Steve? Fine. Did you send me a request to be a friend? I believe I did. Okay, I'll 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 answer it now. You know, 
And and I also sent you uh, the request for the schematic. And after what you were just saying about your wiring, I understand why it's not available. Yeah. <laughs> I don't I don't have any wiring underneath there. No, um, I meant for I meant the schematic for uh, doing the dead rail uh, within your locomotive and the uh, um, oh. DCC it. Yeah. Well. Oh, I think I didn't. I answer that. I thought I sent you something on that. Anyway, we'll take it offline. Yeah. Do Do you Do you have a layout? Because no, I I do not. I had a O scale layout until two thousand four, and it seems to be I'm in a career that uh, uh, requires a relocation about every five years, and um, I. Uh, after 2004, I had my first child in 2009, which you guys know what happens then. And then things never got them. Um, uh, in 2004, got out of scale, went to the Cleveland so show and sold everything off. And I had some ON30. And I've always held on to it. And I've always liked the ON30. And, okay. uh, yeah, and, uh, you know, and, and what I, I stood there by you at Harrisburg. And I think everybody was just blown away by your ON18 um, dead rail. And the fast, fascinating thing was when you start, start spinning it around on the Lazy Susan. And <laughs> I can see where people need to be exposed to that more because I can see where these kids in, you know, the, the modules are great, but this is something these micro layouts can go under a bed easily. Uh, it can go in a, you know, to college easily because what you had there, I, I can't remember the dimension of it, but there was a lot of track work in that small area, dead rail. It was pretty dang easy and I have very portable. Uh, you know, you could take that camping. You could do all sorts of things with that. Well, did you see last week the ON18 layout? Yes, yes, I did, and I got totally confused, and I got well, more, I I got thinking more about uh, the different scales of the O scale, and J Jim and I were in the same boat, you know, and <laughs> well, we're, we're not going to go there tonight, okay? Yeah, we <laughs> won't go there. Yeah, we're I took it, to, I took it to the Facebook, and I I started it there, and <laughs> but what I, what 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 I meant was. If you saw that layout, that layout is only nine inches by thirty inches. Oh, that's the one I liked. The were you the one that had the uh, uh, the like the plaque, the wood plaque, or the oval? The the wood what? Uh, I'm I'm sorry. I'm just getting. I just uh, thinking about another one I saw. But yeah, I mean they're so small that uh, you know it, you don't even have to have a shelf layout. You could stick that under the couch and put it on the dining room table once in a while or or you know put it on the coffee table and entertain guests i mean uh, you know I, I certainly would recommend going in that type of direction um you know i, I don't know what kind of on 30 equipment you have now but if it's like a davenport or a porter you can certainly get down a pretty sharp radius Oh, oh! I've really gone down the ON18 rabbit hole also. Uh, oh. uh, with, with the, oh, yeah, I got a pair of those shades already. And what uh, Dill <laughs> Lambert has got, uh, oh, yeah, my uh, ON18 livery has uh, expanded. I just need to, I have a problem um, with my hands right now. I've got a nerve issue, and mm -hmm. I need to get a hold of some um, dual gauge track is what I really need to get, but uh, can't seem, I got one stick of it and um, I want to play more with it. Dual gauge being ON30 and uh, ON18? Yeah, yeah, or HON scale dual gauge. Okay. I guess right. Shinohara used to make it. But I think it was HON3. And oh. HON3. I don't know if they ever made any O and 30 and O and 18. I could be wrong though, you know, but 
anyway, you need to, I think, go into the micro, you know, as soon as you're physically able. I mean, you know, we all have our situations where we can't do exactly what we want to do. But, uh, I mean, that little thing I made last week and showed off, it's only got three sticks, three pieces of track, one switch, you know, and it was built. Oh, on yeah. Yeah. So the expense is low. Yeah. Um, the equipment is very inexpensive. Um, and it's pretty much freelance to what you want to do. And I so, did go. I did go to the Finley, Ohio uh, micro train get together and uh, saw that group there. And it was just amazing. Um, you know, I can't, uh, Ian does the, uh, a micro train cartel podcast. Uh, and uh, there was a group there doing the micro. I mean, this gentleman had a loop of train on top of a, candle you know those candles that all of our wives have with a little metal top unscrew it and burn it for yeah. you know he he recycled one of those jars and he did a circle of track with one lone pine tree right in the middle of the lid it i yes. got video of it it's just you know yeah. the small it's we're all downsizing property <laughs> is too expensive and you know these clubs are being run out of their uh clubhouses because rent so high and you know that's why we see uh like the free freemo n you know get together but uh sometimes you just want to watch a train run and uh, um you know I, i'm trying to design a shelf design right now that i can once in a while stick a loop on the each end but uh you know it's you know how to do more in less space yeah well i think that uh you can certainly get some help on, on this this group of people right here i mean these guys can really model um so ask questions well, this, when, you know oh i absolutely do this is my train club i do not belong to you know there's no, no clubs for on 30 and i you know i go join a ho club to not really enjoy myself too much but uh you know, and I get a variety here. I mean, every scale has something to offer. Every scale. You know, I don't know about Jim and his traction, but you know, that's that's another <laughs> story. But uh, you know, I belong to clubs in the past. I used to belong to the Detroit uh, club uh, out of Holly, and I belong to the Nell Scale Club and all that. But right here, I get it on, on one location. Well. Contact me again, okay? And, I sure uh, will. And we'll we'll talk. I'll give you my phone number. And we'll you know take it to a different level. I'm also having a micro meet here, you know, right across from my house in January the 18th next year. Uh, so you're in Michigan, so that's probably you know maybe Dan cool. and I maybe Dan and I'll have to make a road trip. Uh, <laughs> Dan. <yeah. laughs> Yeah, well, he's been here before. Yeah, Dan, Dan, Dan will travel. You know, uh, yes. So anyway, I'll go ahead and uh, print you. Uh, All right. I, I just get afraid. I get so many requests that people I, I'm not really that familiar with or can't remember who they were. Yeah. So, you know, so I'm a little reluctant. No, but, it's funny. Hey, I, I tell you what, I, I met. I saw you out at Harrisburg and I saw Tom Farrell out and we sat there with Tom forever talking. He was, uh, it was just a wonderful, the camaraderie and it's all scales, all skill level. It's just amazing. And, uh, you know, we don't discriminate against anybody of attraction people. <laughs> no, no, we don't. We don't see many attraction people though. Yeah, we we tolerate them. Yeah, we do. <laughs> if if you've got if you've got shaky hands, it might be a golden opportunity to find a little neighborhood kid to come over and do your non shaky hand work for you. <laughs> he, he didn't have shaky hands until that overhead he touched a few, few times. <laughs> that, that did it for him. <laughs> 
Well, that's that's the way sometimes people drag uh, somebody into the hobby is uh, a little neighborhood kid. Yeah. Well, I, I, I don't have any neighborhood kids old enough in my neighborhood. Um, we're in a transition. The only people who move in here are after someone dies. Uh, we're in an established neighborhood. Grandkids sometimes. But anyhow, anybody else have a layout they want to discuss or, or anything else? I, I think this is what we need to do from time to time. I just open it up and just run with it. Um, I think it's we need to get to know each other and uh, what your interests are. Likes, dislikes. How about... Anybody else? I'm gonna call on somebody. If you if you don't volunteer, I'll call on you. <laughs> you know? Believe me, I will. I'll call. How about Arizona? Bill Simpson. Bill, can you unmute yourself a little bit? Yeah. What, what do you want, Steve? <laughs> Tell me about your layout and your experience experiences. My layout is partially built in scale. Whoa. Really? Yep. What's what size in? What size layout? Uh 28 inches by 56. Oh, I love it. I love it. I call that a micro except an in scale that, that was probably a, you know what we call an operating layout. It's four by essentially a four by eight in HO. Wow. Now, have you had that long? Uh, about a year and a half. It's really? still under construction. But uh, are you a, a new model railroader or is this? Uh, no, no, no. <laughs> You're just downsized? Nope. Just tore down the old one because I was tired of it. Yeah. Steve? Well, that, that, yes, sir. Steve Bill is uh, taking over the uh, in scale modeling uh, segment from. Uh, uh, Clem Harris. Oh yeah, uh, yes. I'm now. I remember you saying that, but his name wasn't familiar. And I saw him on. You know, I can see everybody at the bottom here, and so um, he, he he built that. In my opinion, that fantastic kit of the uh, service station. I I just absolutely that. I was amazed. Well, I remember that station. That was a nice station. Very nice. Very nice. So you're you're making a smaller. You, you've downsized. Um, are you going for a lot of quality models? Just, uh, uh, rather I'm than hoping. it's it's kind hoping. of a test thing. I'm gonna test okay. out all the things that I haven't tried before. Oh well, well, that's good. So are you running diesel, steam, or what? Yes. What's your control system? Uh, it's DC and I've got both steam and diesel, but I'm mostly steam. Okay. All right. Well, if you're, um, what size radius do you have? I'm trying to visualize how big a locomotive you can run. Uh, you know? it's minimum radius is 12 inches. Okay. So big boys are not, you can't big run big boys. boys are not them. my friend. No. Uh, okay. six, six axle diesels look okay, not great, but okay. Okay, wow. So, rolling stock is limited to what mostly 40 footers. Oh, okay. So, you that that, that puts you in a, a time period probably before 1960 or something. Oh, yeah, probably aiming closer to the 30s. Yeah. Okay. I probably won't run the diesels once I finish it, but, but I have a really one that runs really well, so it's my good test engine. So you, you don't have sound because you're straight DC. Yes. Okay. So I that, have not experimented with DCC or any of that yet. Maybe. Well, the good thing about that is you can get DC equipped locomotives very inexpensively yep you know 
and then you can add what you want to if you if you want to um mm -hmm. or you can just like silence you know turn up my 70s rock and roll and enjoy watching the go around i love what you're saying i've, I've got it going in my building you know that's probably the only thing i'll miss when i take it down is the rock and roll music but i'll have to put a you know a small uh sound system in the uh micro room we, we can get a lot you can get a lot a lot of micro layouts in a 12 by 12 room. I'm just looking around, you know, I've got that little uh, nine by 30 and I can put these everywhere. <laughs> hmm. Really? This is, this is like, it's contagious. It's like COVID. Of, <laughs> oh my gosh. How many can you fit in there? Yeah, Jim. What are you going to do once you take it down? I don't what are you gonna do? Him? What are you What are you gonna do with? It? Oh, I don't know. You know, I, I I'm I've got this O N eighteen bug, and I I just for some reason would love to put these little teeny locomotives on my on my scenery with my buildings. I, I think I showed a, a a slide last week of of the uh, little chaise sitting in front of a station that that's on my layout now, and it looked perfectly. Okay. Um, you know, you, you uh, I, I would take up some of the sidings in the yards and things like that and make it a little less complicated. But I want, I want to take, I'd make it a complete shelf layout, you know? So I don't know. It, it, it's, it's something I'm kicking around. You know, I've got the micros, and I, I can I can take the micros and share my whole layout. When I take those, I can't take my other layout anywhere. Yeah, yeah. And you, you know, if people won't come to see you. You got to go to the people. So you know. So does anybody else have any any more input they want to fire off right now? So we're listening. Tonight is just like an open mic, you know. <laughs> Nobody. Well, part of the problem is we've got so many people at the uh, the Narragage Convention in Pittsburgh. That's where both Phil and uh, Tom Farrell are, and unfortunately, Martin uh, had to go to the doctor today. He's he's not feeling well. Greg yeah. can not here because he wasn't feeling well he thinks he may have COVID and mm. uh you know it's just well as somebody said we're getting old some of us well yeah yes we are well mm. Steve thank you so much for doing your segment tonight we really do appreciate it well but we it, was, it was an opportunity I think to talk and just kind of I like to meet the guys who are on here. Um, I don't know that many of them. Um, and it's always interesting to talk to other people about their layout. Yeah. Um, I love I love talking to them and, and seeing what they've done. I learned something and I don't, you know, there are some people who are just outstanding modelers. And yes, you can learn from them, but there's also a guy out there who's just starting out that can teach you something too. Right. So, hey Steve, a, yes, a good topic. A good topic to have one night, maybe uh, do's and don'ts for your layout. Like, if you had to do your layout all over again, what would you not do? Mm. Or what would you repeat that's good about construction or you know, duck unders and all that kind of good stuff? Well, yes, that would be an excellent. I'm writing that down because times have changed and methods have changed for building. Materials have changed. Uh, controls changed. You, you know, those of us that started out a long, long time ago, 
we had fun then and we're kind of amazed right now with what's going on um yeah. you know so yeah I, i'm writing that down i will i will have a, a segment where we'll talk about that all right okay jim i'm sorry all right Steve, thanks so very much and uh